In the words of Jamie Jensen, you can grieve and still be a badass. If you're tired of feeling like you have to show up a certain way for your brand and audience, despite what you may be going through, this episode is definitely for you. Join me and Jamie Jensen for a deep conversation on grieving, worthiness, and vulnerable leadership. In this episode, you'll learn why you're allowed, yes, allowed to share your mess, even as a leader. You'll also learn how to share vulnerably without leaving your audience feeling broken, and that it is possible to share all parts of you while still leading your mission. Jamie Jensen is an award-winning screenwriter, business strategist, and the creator of Story School. To date, she's helped over 700 entrepreneurs increase their sales by up to 900% with the power of effective storytelling. Prior to helping business leaders connect deeply with their audiences through copy, video, and talks, Jamie worked in story development in Hollywood, assisting writers in both film and TV. Jamie is the co-director and executive producer of the feature film, Hannah Has a Ho Phase, which won her the best feature writer at the LA Film, at the La Femme Film Festival in 2013. And she most recently completed her ninth feature length screenplay. Jamie divides her time between New York City and Los Angeles. When she's not writing or helping clients with their creative business, voice and story, you can find Jamie drenched in sweat from yoga or dance class, cracking inappropriate jokes, or curled up on the couch watching movies on repeat. This episode is a little different than the other episodes I've aired, and I really, really hope you enjoy it. So it's time to dive deep and talk about grieving and being a badass and having all your worthiness with the one and only Jamie Jensen. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with one of my dear sisters whom I love, Jamie Jensen. Welcome to today's Thought Leaders. Super excited to have you. Thank you for having me, Ruby. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, it's, and yeah, can we just take a deep breath? (sighs) Yeah, it's, you know, I just messaged you a few days ago asking if you want to reschedule um, because you've been going through something really real and we're going to touch on that and we're also going to talk about the entrepreneurial journey and, and the mess and um, worthiness. So this is going to be a really deep dive, juicy topic for our listeners um, but Jamie, why don't you why don't you fill us in a little bit about what what's been going on and and why you really want to talk about mess and worthiness today? Yeah, first of all, I just want to say that I have like full body chills. So. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me like literally goosebumps. Yep, everywhere on the arms, which is always like spirit's way of showing us that we're on the right track and taking the right leaps. Um, What's been going on is my ex-boyfriend who was really one of my best friends and like a dear friend of mine, even though we had broken up, we were separated for maybe four or five months. Um, He passed away about 10, 11 days ago from cancer. And he was really only diagnosed with cancer like seven, eight weeks ago. So it all has happened very fucking fast. Like- completely unexpected, completely blindsided. It's just been complete insanity. Mm. So I've spent the last 11 days in a very intense period of grief and processing all of the shit that comes up when you lose someone um, and really thinking a lot about death and mortality, which, I mean, I kind of have always been into on some level. Um, but it's just brought up a lot of other stuff. And, and I've been sharing a lot about it vulnerably on social media. Like I really haven't been like, Oh, this, you know, I've been writing tributes and honoring him. And that's been part of my process as, as it is to really share vulnerably um, the story of how we met and how I've been honoring him in this process. And 
just all the feelings of dealing with grief and loss and facing death and the stuff that comes up when we do. And, um, you know, as someone who works with people, you know, as a coach and marketing strategist and the story coach, it's been interesting for me to think about like, oh, everyone, like everyone feels sorry for me now or thinks right. like I'm a hot mess who can't necessarily show up. And not that I didn't take space for bereavement. I mm -hmm. did. Um, sorry that there's a dog barking right now outside somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life, people. This is real life. We're this recording. There's no life. editing. <laughs> no editing. Um, not that I didn't take space for bereavement and all that, but it, you know, at some point you have to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward even when dealing with grief and loss. And in the messiness of that, it, it's easy to say, oh, well, there's things that I can't show up for in my business or there's things that I can't do or there's like, I just can't because I can't right now because I'm grieving. I can't right now because I'm a mess. I can't right now because insert reason here. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that I can and we all can. And um, it's made me think a lot, you know, particularly in, in like, in objections that I've heard, you know, as someone who works with people on like conversions and sales, um, it's made me think a lot about like how one of the fears that we have or the objections we have in not moving forward with things or the excuses we make is like, well, it's not perfect enough yet. Or like, I'm too messy and things aren't, aren't calm. And if they were calm or if they were this, or if they looked this way, or if they looked that way, then like that would be the right time or that would be the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, that it's supposed to look or feel a certain way in order for you to feel worthy of stepping forward into how you want to be supported um, or what you want your business to look like or what you want to be creating. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been thinking a lot about that because I'm like, the universe hasn't really given me a choice. Yeah. Like I, and I don't feel disempowered in any way, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. For, I mean, first of all, I just want to say once again, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I can't imagine what you're going through. And at the same time, um, you're right. Like, despite like what happens in our lives, whatever traumas we go through or life experiences, life continues to move. And so what do we do about it? And I feel like you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about perfectionism and messiness as entrepreneurs, as leaders, we can get really caught up in showing face. Like we need to appear a certain way or our audience expects us to appear a certain way, to do things a certain way, because maybe that's how they would do it. You know, maybe people who are in your audience are questioning, is, is she actually giving herself enough time versus really coming from a place of like, oh, wow, Jamie, we trust Jamie. She knows what she's doing. She's leading her life. It's just, it's all perceptions and misconceptions. Um, when it comes to how we choose to move forward from whatever it is that we're dealing with. And especially when we have this moving, live, I call it a, like this living, breathing organism, our businesses. <laughs> when we have something that's still moving and you're in a place of feeling messy, yes, yes, we can continue to put some of our focus on that or all of our focus on that if that's what feels right for us. So I'm wondering like, what was it like to actually come up with this thought process of, yeah, you know, like I deserve to keep doing this. I'm just thinking about how to answer that because I don't really have an answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, it just, it just, just something I did. <laughs> I mean, I think it, it always comes down to worthiness. And the truth is like a lot of the grieving process and particularly in this case with this loss and the tragedy of it, like there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of guilt. Everyone around 
Um, my ex's name is Robert. Everyone who loves Robert, everyone who's around him. I haven't had a conversation with one person going through this who isn't like, was there more we could have done? Could we have caught this sooner? Could we have helped him? Should I have been here? Should I have been there? Should I have said something differently? Should I have had a different conversation? Like, literally recounting every moment leading up to his death, questioning if they did good enough, Mm -hmm. if they did enough. And that's the enoughness wound, you know? And the truth is like, it doesn't matter because we can't go back in time. So like, even if, even if there's something more that could have been done, even if there's something that could have been changed, the situation unfolded as it unfolded. So what value does it bring to anyone to literally punish yourself in questioning what could have been? Mm. And I think it's, I think it, it just is part of the grieving process. I don't think, you know, because when you lose someone, especially when it's sudden, which in this case it it was and wasn't, um, you come up against this, I would have spent more time with them had I known my time was, had I known my time was limited. Right. And like all of our time is limited Mm -hmm. (laughs) in this lifetime, right? Um, (laughs) In this lifetime on this planet at this moment with what we're doing right now, like, okay. (laughs) you know, time is not real and it's also limited. Right. So, uh, you know, we make choices and we make choices and like, we literally can't go back and change the past no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just hard. It's just, you know, it's hard to kind of overcome that and be like, I don't need to torture myself about this, you know, and, 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 and yet we do. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, I need to, telling yourself things like, I need to pause right now and feel bad and sit in my guilt and feel sad and not do these other things that I also really want to do. And it's like you're just perpetuating this cycle of of guilt and shame and making yourself feel like shit. Mm Mm-hmm. For, yeah. for that part of you that is still moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't mean I won't feel fear or shame or guilt or sadness. Like I'm, I'm very sad. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very fucking sad. And I can hold space for that and still hold space for the areas of my business that bring me joy and the areas of my life that bring me joy. And the more that I expand into that and like exercise that, day by day it gets easier. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's, it's so easy to, to put one foot in front of the other and decide that like, well, grief sucks. So every moment of this has to suck. Right. And I don't think that every moment of anything has to suck. I think it sucks when it sucks. And then sometimes you forget (laughs) that, that it sucks, (laughs) you know, and you can, be present in the moments that don't suck too, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like there was so many, there's just so many moments of like funny things, you know, even when Robert was sick, like through, through him being sick where he was cracking jokes and things were funny, even though he felt terrible. Um, And there's no, like there isn't a version of life. I think that is ever just one color. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think the same is true of everything that we do as thought leaders, as writers, as speakers, as authors, um, as influencers, whatever that means, that, you know, we don't have to show up in one color Mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy because I think that's so 
so many of us try to show up in one color, whether we're conscious of it or not, we're trying to show up in one color when you're right, we're multicolored and, and there's so many different dimensions to us and we're allowed to feel sad and still run our business and we're allowed to be messy yet still give a speech on a stage. Like we're allowed to not be where we want to be financially and still lead our group masterminds. Like we're allowed to do all of these things. When did it become about, we need to be a certain way in order to show up in this way for our clients or for our audiences? Like when did that happen? And, and with so many people getting caught up in that, it's so important to have conversations like this where it's like, no, we're, we're multifaceted human beings. And we have so many different things going on in our lives. It's not just business. It's not just our leadership. It's not just our personal life. It's all these different pieces of this puzzle that create who we are in any given moment. And like, I, I just like, I just felt my shoulders go down with that, just that permission of like, we're allowed to be all of that and more in any given moment. And we don't have to continue to show up as like one fucking thing all the fucking time, just to appease an image, just to appease someone else's perception of us or how we think other people, ex ex how we feel other people expect us to show up as. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that they're even showing up and writing vulnerable posts and like going through the loss publicly. Like part of me was like, this is some really sad shit. This is fucking tragic. And mm -hmm. I'm usually hilarious. Like I'm a comedy writer. I write funny statuses on Facebook. I share funny things. I'm upbeat. I'm shiny. Like I'm, you know, when I, I share vulnerably, but I'm not a channel that people turn on because they're expecting to feel sad right? or to, to be like crying. And I know a lot of people have read my posts and been very moved to tears and have felt what I'm feeling um, because of what I'm sharing. And part of me felt like bad about that a little bit, like, Ooh, sorry, you know, like, mm -hmm. sorry, because that's not the brand expectation people have right. of me. And yet, this is, this is just as real and just as important and just as much a step in the journey, you know, symbolically and otherwise that we have to honor. Mm, yeah. And it, you said something that really popped out. It's brand, the, the term brand expectation, right? Like we work so hard to create these brands for ourselves, yeah. but what we have to remember at the end of the day is that we are the the people behind our brands. And I emphasize the word people, like we are the human beings behind our brands. And as a human being, we go through shit. Like we go through shit. I can't tell you how many of, you know, other entrepreneurs that I know and have had personal conversations with, and they're going through some deep shit too. And yet they continue to show up in a certain way to to, to fit this ex, this brand expectation because they feel like they need to. And I, I really honestly believe that what you're demonstrating and what you're speaking of right now is this new way of being able to show up for, for your mission and for your business. And it's, it's like, I'm just going to term it the real way. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's the real way but the trademark baby <laughs> let's the do real this way. like just being fucking real and and um understanding too that your audience is also a collective of other human beings who are also going through their human experiences so are we not all entitled to go through what we're fucking going through and to use social media and and any other outlet or platform in a way that really feels good for us in that moment of whether you're grieving or going through shit or going through something, whatever it is, like, are we, are we not allowed to do this? I think it's also for, it's, it's, as you're saying this, what I'm realizing too is, as I'm realizing is I'm realizing as I'm choking myself with a headphone thing. <laughs> um, what I'm realizing too, is that part of that for me is, is like, my believing and trusting that my, my audience for lack of a better term can handle it. Mm. You know, like you could like not treating them so preciously, mm -hmm. you know, that, that like 
oh, they can laugh at something funny I write, but like they can't handle it when shit gets real or, you know, that there's this piece of like, will they reject me because I am bringing up uncomfortable shit in them Mm. and it doesn't fucking matter. (laughs) Like, Ultimately, it doesn't matter, you know, because we don't gain anything by being less of who we are. Right. I love that. We don't gain anything by being less than who we are. Yeah, we don't. (laughs) We don't. And yet we see people doing it all the time. You know, and um, I'm sure there are some of our listeners who feel like they're doing it too. And um, trying to be less of or not be so much of something or not be too much of something. Um, and at the end of the day, again, like we're all human beings going through a very human process. And if there's anything that I have learned through um, just my experience with my past like social media marketing company and now doing the work that I do with, with leaders and influencers, it's that social media is a place for us to really express ourselves period like there there are no lines that we need to abide by other than you know facebook's rules and instagram rules but there's there's no real no one has told us like how you should be using this and we're allowed to show up however the fuck we want to show up on our social media. We're allowed to be silly one day and then be sad the next day. And after all, um, when you're building a brand that is very much a personal brand, you know, with a one person behind it, this is really ultimately how you create a deeper connection with your audience is by showing up real versus showing up the real way versus trying to fulfill the brand expectation. I mean, sure. I'm sure there's going to be people that are rubbed the wrong way. And and I'm sure there's people who are like, Oh, I can't handle this shit. Cool. They can leave. (laughs) But why should that be? Why should that determine how you show up? They shouldn't. It shouldn't. No. And yet, shouldn't. and yet people get caught up in the mind fuckery of all this. Mm-hmm. They're like, <laughs> oh, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not in the mood. I can't be this. I can't be that. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. Just be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just be and, and be in your mess. And mm-hmm. um, I think uh, people especially when you're, you're trying to position yourself as a leader, an expert in your field, there's this idea that it has to be perfect. And I feel like this is really the old school way of doing things, you know, like our parents, um, you know, you, you get the degree, you do the thing and then you get the job and then you have to show up a certain way. And it's like, but the, the rules are so bendy now, like there's no rules anymore and we're allowed to show up however the fuck we want to show up. And in fact, we can create that expectation within our audience too. Like, this is my space. This Instagram account is my Instagram account. This is my world. (laughs) Yeah, it's my world. You opted in. Welcome. (laughs) My world, my rules. Right. You know, and it's, we don't have to conform and we're allowed to be messy and imperfect and yet still be seen as experts and still be seen as leaders. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not sure if you've, you've gotten this at all, but um, I'm positive that there are people out there who have probably amplified how much they respect you because of the way you've been showing up. I would say that's probably true. Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> just, F- just FYI. <laughs> right? Thanks, Ruby. I mean, because it takes... As, as much as it's like a freedom thing, like I, I get to just be me, I'm, I'm free, this is how I'm feeling. It can also take a lot of courage to show up in that way when you know like, hey, I've taken all this time to build this audience, to build this brand, to build this, um, you know, quote unquote brand expectation. And now I'm going to show up in a totally fucking different way. You know, that takes courage, but it, 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 and it can take courage to honor what we need. Thank you. 
Mm, you're welcome. It's funny because, and I think this might be like the innate storyteller in me or like the story nerd in me. Mm -hmm. um, if I look back in time and I think about my content and how I've shown up and how that's transformed or evolved over the years of being online, I would say that I have a pattern of like sharing the mess and then sharing the beauty that is born from it. Mm. You know, when I shut down, when I initially shut down my, my copywriting agency, it was, I was, it was terrible. And I called it a breakup. I was like, this is a breakup. <laughs> this is, you know, um, because emotionally that's what it was for me. Like I felt like a hot mess mm -hmm. and I knew that what I was moving into was correct. And it didn't make the process any less messy or difficult or trying emotionally. And not that you can really compare the experience of that, the experience of, it, of actual loss of a loved one. However, from an emotional perspective and from a storytelling perspective, death is death and lots of things are death. Mm -hmm. And so much of what we avoid is we're afraid of death. So, you know, we're afraid of death literally. We're afraid of death figuratively. We're afraid of death metaphorically, emotionally, right? Like mm -hmm. we do so many things to avoid this experience. And, and yet so much can be born from it. Um, there really isn't death without rebirth. Like it doesn't happen. It just mm -hmm. doesn't look you know, I would give almost anything to have Robert back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't know if it's like faith in the divine plan or what that gives me this inner knowing that there's some reason he was taken. And I think everyone who loves him doesn't see what the reason is yet, mm -hmm. but it will become clear in time. Yeah. And it will give birth to so many things that we can't see yet. And I think that that's true of all versions of death you know, the question is, can we learn to not be so terrified of it all the time? <laughs> yeah. Or does the, the fear somehow serve a purpose? Yeah. What I think is so powerful is, um, well, what you said about sharing the mess and then sharing the beauty that's born from it, because this is a question that I get so often, right? Is like how vulnerable is too vulnerable? And I always like to reframe that um, because it, like the actual definition of vulnerability is like putting yourself in danger. It's like a hedgehog laying down <laughs> on his back and having the belly up and it's like, poke me, poke me. Um, I like to reframe it to like, how real can you be? Like, how real can you be? And, um, you know, you're, you're embodying it right now and in, in online right now, and you're embracing the mess and making it your message, but not in a way where there's some other intention other than like, this is just me and I'm just sharing my story. Uh, and I think that's really powerful for our listeners to understand is is that you do get to share this. Um, but do you feel like there is ever a time when real gets too real? Or maybe someone's not ready to be real and they try and force themselves to be real online. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think <laughs> for me, for me, the line is like, uh, there's a difference between vulnerability from the perspective of victimhood and vulnerability from the perspective of power. Mm. And I think that 
it's never to someone's benefit to be vulnerable when it's like they're coming from a place of victimhood um, from a, from a marketing perspective, from a brand perspective, right. you know, it's just, you're not, you know, you have to understand really what your message is and what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that a lot of people come at something vulnerably without feeling clear on like what they really want to say. Right. Um, which can come off as victimhood or like cry for help or you leave your audience. Here's what it is. Um, this is funny because I feel like, and I'll circle back to this in a second. The difference is, and there's benefits to doing this. This like comes back to storytelling stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you share something vulnerably and you leave the audience in a state of the word that I'm looking for is like, you haven't put them back together again. Mm. Um, you know, all story is, can be therapy, right? Like this is the reason why I got into film. This is the reason why I'm into story. It is catharsis. Like it creates catharsis. It allows for us to feel emotions. We wouldn't otherwise feel to process things we wouldn't otherwise process. And by creating an ending or creating a message or creating a final thought or takeaway or whatever, you're leaving the audience on a particular emotional note where they get to put things back together in a certain way, right? The same way that when you're writing an article, you get to decide like what the actual thought process behind your argument is. Like how does one thought lead to the next thought? And when you're sharing a story and you're sharing something vulnerably, you're in the same position of like, are you going to, to leave things messy at meaning like you have not come to a clear state of mind or guiding thought around what you're sharing yet. Um, because then you're going to leave the audience that way too, mm-hmm. which can be of benefit to them and it also can't be of benefit to them. So like, for example, the movie A Star is Born, mm-hmm. that movie leaves people ripped open. Mm-hmm. It leaves a lot of things open. It does not tie things up. It does not, it doesn't. You know, I ended up doing an entire podcast episode just on A Star is Born because I was like, I want to talk about all the things that rips open and doesn't resolve. Mm. So we can actually understand like why we're feeling raw after this movie and, and identify like, what is it that you're still upset about or processing like three days later or four days later that that's like triggering for you or rips open some old trauma or whatever it's doing. Like let's have an educated conversation about what those emotional things are and what, what this story is actually doing. Mm -hmm. so that you're not just like upset and then you like move on with your life without fully processing what's going on psychologically for you or like energetically for you or emotionally for you as a viewer who's experiencing that story on an emotional level. Right. So that's kind of my answer about vulnerability. It's, Mm. I think when you're deciding to be a thought leader, the key here is thought. <laughs> like <laughs> you must be leading with a thought. You must have the guiding thought and understand what that thought is. Like really, what is the thought that you want to leave your audience with? And so if you cannot lead them to that thought, then like you really, then you're not ready. Mm. Yeah. That's a really great simplified way to put it. Yeah. If you can't lead someone to a specific thought with what you're about to share, then you're not ready. And, and quite frankly, like a lot of people aren't ready and, um, but they feel like they should be sharing for the sake of this trend of authenticity and vulnerability and transparency, um, would really or not. And so all you have is a bunch of people airing out their dirty laundry and <laughs> <laughs> seeking Sorry. validation. <laughs> well, cause it is, it becomes the cry for help thing, which right. is, which is like a little bit victimhood. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. Like maybe someone is sharing on social media because they need someone to reach out and ask right. them if they need help. And like, do not suffer in silence. Whatever version of reaching out for help works for you, do it. I'm definitely not suggesting that people suffer in silence and don't reach out, whatever that looks like. However, if the purpose is to lead others in a philosophy, in a way of thinking, in, you know, in, in a particular lifestyle, then your job as a thought leader is to choose the guiding thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Powerful. 
I agree. So we're nearing um, the end of this episode. Um, but I really love where this conversation went because I feel like you embodied the real message here uh, just by the way that you showed up. Like you demonstrated the message that you are clearly trying to portray and our listeners get to witness that right our listeners and viewers get to witness you in action being real embracing the mess while also having the courage to keep doing what you know you're here to do um and it's this dichotomy of things that we don't normally see people do but you're, you're beautifully demonstrating it, you know, like you can be grieving something really major and still working on what you're deeply passionate about and still having conversations like this on a podcast and still showing up for your mission. And you're allowed to do all of these things. You're allowed to be all of these things. You know, you're allowed to get off this podcast and cry your eyes off and then go do work and, and host your mastermind. Like you're allowed to do all of these fucking things. It's literally my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, then, like you just psychically read my entire calendar. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. And you're allowed to do all of these things and you're allowed to laugh right now. You know, like you're allowed to do all of these things and don't let this like false um a sense of uh of let's just keep using it brand expectation hold you back from just being who you are period <laughs> so thank you so much for like really demonstrating that for us today and thank you for it. holding space for it and for creating this forum that allows for that i love <laughs> you so much <laughs> i love you um Jamie, why don't you tell our listeners where they can stalk you online? Yes. Um, they can always find me on Instagram. It's Jamie Lynn Jensen. That's J E N S. I'll have it in the show notes. Of course. Um, <laughs> yep. My site is thejamiejensen.com. Um, and I have some messaging templates there that are fun. If, if anybody's like, what's my brand message? You can grab a template, um, worksheet thingamajigs. And my podcast is on pause right now, but creatorsmakingmoney.com it has lots of cool episodes, including the Star is Born one. If anybody has seen that movie and wants to put the pieces back together, <laughs> put, put the pieces of their soul back together, <laughs> you can find that episode there, um, plus others. But yeah, those would be the best places to, you know, keep listening to my weird, vulnerable, real <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Keep listening to you, you mean? Yeah, you, <laughs> know. You. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jamie, for just being here, for sharing, for opening up. Um, it takes a lot of courage, but it's also just, it's helpful to everyone listening and watching this. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this episode of Today's Thought Leader. I know it was a little different today, but different is fucking amazing, especially when it helps you gain insights that will um, help you show up in more real ways for what you're here to do. Um, be sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes. And if you have any questions for myself or for Jamie, reach out to us on social media. The links are in the show notes. And I will see you back here this Thursday for a brand new episode of Today's Thought Leader. Thanks, everyone.